one, I would like to ask everyone, wherever you are, to worship with us in spirit and truth, for indeed is worthy of all praise. As the psalm says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make us joyful noise in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make joyful noise to Him with song of praise. For the Lord is great God and a great King above all gods. Let's praise Him. Who prays? Who prays the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is worthy and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above.
who will live like yours. The race is stronger. Lord, oh, who will live like your love is deeper than our hearts divide us? Who will live like this? Who will live? Oh, who will live like your name is higher than every other power? Impossible, O oh Lord, in your name. For indeed, your name is above all every, all every other name, Lord. That one day all, all nation, all the all people will bow down on you, Lord. But there's no other name given among men that we can, we can be saved. There's no other life. 
worship our Lord for He's worthy of all praise. Yes, Jesus.
are the reason why we're here. You are the reason why we have eternal life, O oh Lord. We thank you and we worship you. Let's continue to worship our good Lord, our faithful God, who is worthy of all praises.
called us to go and make disciples of all nations. We are here, Lord. We are here. We give you glory, you give you honor, and we give you worship, Lord. For you indeed worthy of all praises and worship. In Jesus' mighty name. My team today is together in weakness. And like all the speakers before me, I have only 15 minutes to stand up, speak up, shut up, and sit down. So I'm not going to waste your time, so let's dive straight to our team together 
in weakness. Brothers and sisters, this is a Baptist World Congress. I assume that most of the viewers watching are Baptist too. And all the speakers are Baptist too. And, and our President and General Secretary are Baptist too, of course. Baptists are famous for many things, good or bad. We are famous for our Baptist business meetings, long and sometimes divisive meetings. And we can really argue until our sweat becomes like great drops of blood. I know. Because I'm a Baptist. The first church I ever stepped foot inside is a Baptist church. I got saved in a Baptist church. I got baptized in a Baptist church. I, I got married in a Baptist church. I got ordained in a Baptist church. I got my bachelor and master degree in a Baptist seminary. And I've been serving full time in one and only one Baptist church since 1982. For the last 39 years. And most probably... I will have my funeral in a Baptist church too. And as a Baptist pastor for the last 30 over years, I know we Baptists can be very divided. I know one Baptist church in my country, in the business meeting, they took three and a half hours to argue and debate over buying a church when. I know of another Baptist church where the members went to the back of the church to switch off the PA system when the members were arguing. I know of another Baptist church who sacked their pastor for not listening to the instruction of the elders. I know of still another Baptist church also in my country who, who hired this new pastor and said to him, we pay you to work and get your wife to work also for free. I'm sure that many of you watching would understand me well unless you are not a Baptist. Our team is together in witness. So my question for you is, how can we be a good witness if first of all, we Baptists are not together? How then can the people call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without us Baptists coming together to preach to them, working together to witness to them? We are not an island by ourselves. We Christians are not an island by ourselves. We Baptist Christians are not an island by ourselves. We need one another. And therefore, we need to work together. In fact, this is the heart cry of Jesus our Lord when He prayed for His disciples and for us in John chapter 17, verses 20 to 22. Turn with me to your Bible. If you have your Bible with you, looking at John chapter 17, verses 20 to 22. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through the message that all of them may be one. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Now let us remember this one word, together. This is crucial. Together. This is crucial. In any group events, teamwork plays the most important part in winning or, or losing. In football, Levin, Roberto, Firmino would not make a good team. Or Levin, Alison, Becker would also not make a good team. I, I'm giving you a hint that I'm a, a Liverpool supporter. Both Firmino and Alison are believers, but I don't think they are Baptists. Let us pray that they become Baptists soon. Or the greatest footballer that ever lived and well known to all, you should know him. Action Arantas do Nacimento. And I hope I pronounce him correctly. Pele. Now all these people became spectacularly successful. As individuals, they are famous, but as a team, as a team, unless they can work together with, with other players, they are going to fail miserably. And similarly, we Baptists must work together, united in one heart and one mind and one spirit. Despite of our differences in our background, our education, our upbringing, our status, 
whether we are Brazilian or Americans or Canadian or Russian or Korean and Japanese and Indian or Mexican, Malaysian, from the Caribbean island or Central America, or whether you are Democratic, Republican, a, a supporter of John Biden or not, Joe Biden or not, or whether you are American Baptist or Northern Baptist or Cooperative Baptist, Union Baptist or Chinese Baptist, Indian Baptist, but as long as we all agree on the foundational truth of the faith, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And may I have your permission to add also, as long as we belong to the Baptist World Alliance, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are one big family. Amen? So let us all work together. There is much we can do when we are together to share our resources, our manpower, our ideas, our talent for a common purpose. And what is that? Together in weakness. Remember, I've said Baptists are famous for many things, good or bad. We are famous for our Baptist business law meetings. We are famous for being divided. But I also want to say we are famous because we believe that every Baptist is a missionary. And I don't want to take credit for this motto. This resounding phrase was the motto of a 19th century Baptist hero, a most unknown in the UK but revealed in, in Europe as the father of continental Baptists. By his immense energy, organizational skill, commitment to evangelism and sacrificial faith, he was responsible for the founding of hundreds of churches and the saving of thousands of souls. Now, Baptist work across Europe today exists because of the ministry of Johannes Gehen Onken. His life was truly remarkable. It is estimated that he was responsible for distributing over 2 million Bibles and untold millions of gospel tracts. So may his motto, every Baptist, a missionary, live on among the Baptists, indelibly written upon the heart of every Baptist. Now looking at our text very briefly in John chapter 20, John chapter 20 verses 19 to 21. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. Now, this event took place immediately after the resurrection. To have the disciples overcome their fear and to dispel any doubt that they were dreaming or seeing a ghost, Jesus gave them what they needed most, Himself. He showed them His hand and, and sight. He knew the disciples were all afraid and fearful and He said to them, Peace be with you. And this was to reassure them that Jesus was no ghost and that they were not hallucinating. The other gospel in Luke chapter 24, 37 to 39 says, they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubt rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Now, does a ghost have flesh and bones? I don't know because I have not seen one nor talked to one. I let you know if they want to see me because I don't want to see them. Do you want to see them? You let me know if you want to. I'll pray for you. Or I will ask our former president, Paul Messiza, to pray for you because now that he is no longer president, he should be free. I better not ask our new president, Thomas McKay, because now that he took on this presidency at this time of the pandemic, I'm sure he will be very busy, very, very busy. Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus is making crystal clear that he is alive and reason. He says to them, peace be with you. Jesus could have rebuked them for their unfaithfulness and cowardice. 
He could have turned to Peter and scolded him. You said you would die for me. How come you deny me three times? Did Jesus do that? No. He said, peace be with you. And when Jesus saw that the fear now turned to joy, commissioned them as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. What a tremendous privilege and what a great responsibility and, and great humility to realize that Jesus is sending us into the world as witnesses to take the message to the whole world, the message given to us in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. The gospel message given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 2 to 4. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I receive, I pass on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sin according to the scripture, that it was buried, that it was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Are we doing that? That was and still is the great commission for us today, for the churches today. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Brothers and sisters, Baptist Christian, we are all compelled by the great commission. We lead with a passionate commitment to gospel witness in every context and people's group. We foster multi-directional partnerships that connect individuals and churches and encourage global mission and evangelism. We seek to witness our faith in Christ that is rooted in the un uniqueness of the gospel in order to engage deeply in the lives of the people, in the midst of the brokenness, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of disappointment, in the midst of injustice, and even in the midst of a, a pandemic. The unbelieving world needs to see the gospel transforming power and weakness and bodies in a local family of Christians who love God and serve each other in the most gracious and loving way. During the early days of the MCO, movement control order in my country, when many were going hungry without food, my church, Kuala Lumpur Baptist Church, was able to rise up to help those in need. We were able to give out daily meals for more than four months, frozen chicken, vegetable, eggs, mince pork, milk powder, grocery, money, and, and even face masks and sanitizer to help so many people, so many people. We don't claim to be heroes. We are not trying to show everyone that we are not afraid of the virus or that the virus cannot harm us. No. It is just that we have a responsibility to show our care and compassion during this critical time. And it is in demonstrating compassion and generosity in critical time like this that we are able to say with the psalmist, come, come and see the works of the Lord in Psalm 46 verse 8. Now people are asking, where is God in times like this? People are crying out to the churches, where are you Christian who claim to have the love and compassion of God? Now this is the time. This is the time to show it. This is the time to demonstrate it. Where is your sword? Where is your life? And how do people see the works of the Lord if they do not see our light shining, our good deeds, our weakness? Now remember this. Remember this, we are witness in the society. We are the light and sword of the earth. And we are not to be hidden in the comfort of our homes. And we go out to seek out these people. And who are these people? The lonely people, the hungry man, the thirsty man, the dying man, the, the man who's poor, the man who's down. The bleeding man, the man who needs to see, the man who needs to love, the man who is blind. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And these are people who pass us by every day. Can we see it in their eyes? Empty people filled with care. 
headed who knows where. Who are these people? They may be our own family members. They may be our spouse. They may be our parents. They may be our children. They may be our colleagues. They may be our neighbors. They may be our school friends. Let us go to these people. Together in weakness, boldly sharing our faith in Jesus as Lord and embracing anew the distinctive that every Baptist is a missionary. I'm a Baptist. I'm a missionary. Are you a Baptist? Are you a missionary? Now turn to the person beside you and ask him or her, are you a missionary? Then let us together go out. Go out in weakness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have called each one of us to witness for you. You have sent us into the words, witnesses of the Great Commission. Father, we pray, may we all be compelled by the urgency to bear witness for you, to engage deeply in the lives of the people in the midst of brokenness, crisis, disappointment, injustice, and, and even in the midst of a pandemic. Most importantly, Father, we pray that you help us to be together in weakness, working and serving together with your help and power and leading, embracing anew the distinctive that we are a missionary. So, Father, use us and send us out as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Dear John, my privilege to be speaking to you through television media. Unchangeable mission of God. I want to use subtitle, A Workman Need Not to Be Ashamed, Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. John Cog, you've been a great world leader, not only for the Malaysian people, but you're a great leader for the world, for the Baptist Alliance. Workman needs not to be ashamed. If I want to be remembered by the people, only thing that Billy Kim is a good friend of John Cock. 2 Timothy 2.15, we find these words. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Jesus left the model for workmen to follow. As Paul admonishes young Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman, God's person, then need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As we work for the Lord, as we do the mission work, I think most important things that we need to remember is we propagate the God's word, not psychology, not philosophy, not sociology, but we need to focus upon God's word, the scripture. And workmen certainly have a compassion for the lost soul and lost world. Matthew 14, 14, and Jesus went forth and saw great multitude and was moved with the compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. When Jesus saw the multitude, they not saw the number, but Jesus saw their soul. He saw right into their heart, and they are without Christ. They are lost. And I think we as missionaries, we as the gospel preachers, we must focus upon man's soul, because that's most important for God. I believe we need to remember this world is a competitive world. As a missionary, we must realize we live in a busy world. We live in a merciless world. We live a rich world, unfriendly world. We certainly live in a poor world. Wilbur Smith once said, I dare not to marry because the future is too unsettled. Wilbur Force certainly is a great man of God. Yet he said, I dare not marry because the future is too unsettled. William Penn, there's a scarcely anything around but us, but ruin and despair. The Lord great and told the people, the lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. Don't let the world's wealth and pleasure distract you and me not to focus upon the propagation of the gospel. Teeming millions of people out there never heard the gospel story once in their life before they pass into eternity. I believe we need to focus upon as much as possible how we're going to make a change different the better world to live. I believe we need to realize God first. And everything that we do, you know, Matthew says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be padded, passed on to you. We must return the faith of the founding fathers of our world. We must think unthinkable. Hear inaudible, see the unseeable. It's a Southern Baptist model. I believe 
we need to realize our world is going trouble, decay. With the coronavirus, there's a hardly no hope for small business. And many of the churches not meeting because of the virus. But we find the book of Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, he shall reap. Again in Psalm 9, 17 said, the wicked shall turn into hell and all the nations that forget God. And as I look at the Korean church scene, we were experiencing God's blessings in 60s, 70s, and 80s. But even Korean church, our economy has gone up. Our churches went up. But as soon as economies flourish, people take their car to go to ocean, mountain, the scenic spots. They forget about keeping Sunday holy. I believe the influence of the, our world has certainly brought us apathy in our Christian life and attending faithfully to the task that God has given to us. And therefore, we find if God before us, who can be against us? I believe the only thing will overcome in world is a compassion. In the book of Corinthians, we find the love of Christ constrains me to do so. We have uh, missionaries graveside here in their soul. They are one missionary lady named by Ruby Kendrick. In her tombstone, we find in grave, if I had a thousand lives, I will give all to Korea. I think that type of spirit, the missionary who came to Korea last decade or last centuries and brought the gospel of love, gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that type of dedication brought Korean church revival and the Korean church growth. As you may not recognize, in 1955, we had less than 1 million Christians and less than 4,000 churches. About three decades later, Korean church experienced more than 10 million Christians with the somewhere around 60, 70,000 churches. All because dedicated missionaries came from America, Australia, England, and other parts of the world, brought the gospel of Jesus Christ to our people, and the Korean people had no hope at that time, and they gravitate to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are so grateful that we are able to enjoy how God has blessed this nation, not only economically, financially, but God has blessed church life many of the churches overflowing. I believe that at one time, Korea exceed regular population growth four times faster. So that means God has certainly brought great awakening to our Korean people. It is my prayer that God will bring great awakening to people of Malaysia. And I believe John Cog, you and your church should be catalyst to bring great hope, great light into not only Malaysia, but all around your nation. I believe you have a capability of doing that. You have a great church. You have a great people. You have a great organization. And you have a great burden. It is my prayer. Only thing will make it possible is a our faith will make possible. And I believe beyond your faith, love makes it much easier as we propagate the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody has said, love is the oil that lubricates our spiritual being. Love is life that rejuvenates. Love is the affection to captivate. Love is power to consecrate. Love is the spring of animate. Love is tonic 
to stimulate. Love is grace to elevate. The greatest things that we could give to our world is the love of Jesus Christ. Workmen must have secret of a power of a communion, of a prayer. As you could remember when John Knox prayed, give me a Scotland or give me a death. I believe God has given answer to John Knox's prayer. Prayer is the key to being successful workman, successful preacher, successful gospel sending people. Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, what are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. I believe what all the Christians around the world need prayer life, such sacred and deeply devoted and motivated. My good friend, Dr. Cho young just passed away yesterday. If I could say one word, what about Pastor Dr. Joe? I say he's a man of a prayer. One time he asked me, he prays five hours a day. I have no argument when man prays five hours a day, God must use that man for his purpose, for propagating the gospel and sending missionaries around the world. And Martin Luther was not satisfied with religious world into which he was born. His deep need for personal piety caused him to spend much time in prayer. The result of that amazing and agonizing prayer brought great reformation. John Wesley prayed, the worldwide Methodist movement started. James 5, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of Eliot much. Prayer brings power. Prevailing prayers brings much power. I believe our dear friend who said, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. When Moses prayed, the sea opened up and became a superhighway. When Abraham prayed, God gave him son when it's an impossibility. When Moses prayed, God certainly beat great leader of that time, Pharaoh. When Joshua prayed, Almighty Street fell on his leadership. When Elijah prayed, he called down fire from heaven. When Daniel prayed, he was saved from the lions. When Paul prayed, the prison doors were shaken right off their hinges. When George Mueller prayed, the great orphanages were built and maintained. When Hannah prayed, God gave her son Samuel. When Hezekiah prayed, God spared his life 15 more years. When Roberts prayed, Pentecost swept across the country of Wales. I believe you and I been entrusted the gospel and we must effectively propagate that gospel, able to do that, we need to get on our knees, pray, pray, pray without ceasing. I believe that's the answer to the great world mission that your church is planned to do. Again, let me say thank you for being friend. Thank you for taking, taking the gospel to your region and beyond the world. It is my prayer this year's your mission conference will be successful. God bless you from Seoul, Korea. This is Billy Kim.
očenství, mám this morning we can come back in the house of the Lord to worship Him and to hear the preaching of the Word. Good morning to every one of you and welcome to our mission month. This month, yeah, very, this morning, we are very blessed to hear two speakers share on mission. And next Sunday, we will have the famous Christian singer come songwriter from Jakarta Praise Community Church. JBCC, Sydney Mohidi, to come to bring us the mission challenge. I have the following announcement to make. Remember, you can give your offering via online transfer to the church account, but please specify very clearly whether it is for tithing, general offering, charity, or even for a mission. And for Mission 2022 offering, please take note that October is Cal Baptist Church Mission Month and we want to thank God for those of you who have been faithfully giving and fulfilling your pledge to Mission 2021. And there's still time if you are behind your giving this year and we have collected 65% so far for Mission 2021. And for Mission 2022, you can download the mission brochure from our website. Fill up the pledge card and email back to us. If you are planning to give to Mission 2022, please make sure you specify clearly it is for Mission 2022. If you do not, we will assume that the offering specified for Mission is for this year, Mission 2021. Please take note that giving to mission is above and beyond our tithes and offering to the church. Let us continue to pledge our support to bring the gospel to the people's group beyond the shores of our nation. And let us not just talk about mission, but show our support by praying, going and giving to mission. Another announcement is calling all young people in our church aged 12 to 21 years old and we want to encourage you to join the Malaysia Baptist Youth Camp this coming December 28th to 30th. And the Youth Camp will be a virtual event that will allow you to meet, interact and learn together with other young people on Zoom or Discord. And the details are as follows. The ages is for 12 to 21 years old, date December 28th to 30th. And the camp fees is $20 before October 10 for early birds and $30 after October 11 
and you may email to calvbapt at calbc.org.my for more uh, information. And then the next announcement is the e-trip shop. Please take note that you can visit us, the website given to you for great buys at rock bottom prices and all the proceeds will go to charity. And since they launched the e-trip shop, they have been doing very well. And we thank God for the many people who have been following us on the website to purchase uh, great buys at rock bottom prices. And then take note that tomorrow we are reopening our kindergartens here, Puling Kindergarten and T Kids City in Desa Park City. And we want you to remember, pray for all the teachers and the children as they resume face to face classes. Let's all stand as we sing our closing doxology together. God's benediction together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lifts up His countenance on you and bless you and dismiss you with His love, His peace, His joy and protection now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.